In a piece called The Coffee Break Principle, I claimed that learning about science can be compared to getting up a mountain. How so? I could give a long lecture, or I could tell you a quick story. Hi, my name's Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. Do you like stories that let you nerd out in one way or another? Stay with me to the end in this one, and I'll show you a whole playlist of such stories. Okay, now, I thought. Did Professor Murgatroyd... No, that's not his real name. Um, this is a piece of fiction, anyway. So, um, did Professor Murgatroyd really just discuss the details of a new pond in his garden on the phone while I sat and calculated the Zeeman effect for him? This was an exam now, wasn't it? The f***, I said. Professor Murgatroyd turned around and took the cell phone from his ear. Sorry? Huh? We don't say words like that here in these hallowed halls. Two minutes later, I looked at the figure in front of me, slowly taking in my friend Alf. He grinned. Did it go well? No. Sorry, didn't mean to yell at you. What, what an a**. Alf's grin imploded. No pass, no pass. I pushed past him and stopped out of the Srinivasa Ramanujan parlor at the University Under the Sea. Um, it's a piece of fiction, remember? Would be cool, though, if there was a university of that name with a parlor of that name. Anyway, out on the grass, a couple of girls played ultimate frisbee. They looked beautiful to me. I didn't know any of them. Desperation hit. I still don't know how to calculate this and probably never will, I said to myself. What am I going to do now? I went back to my one-room apartment. That is what I did. Well, first I had to pack my stuff. Professor Murgatroyd's well-meaning second chance in his office had been the end game to my last exam before the summer. I sat on my sofa bed and stared at the opposite wall and that enlarged and printed image of some nature place somewhere with my ex-girlfriend on it too. I just thought of frisbees for a while. Then I took the pinboard down, cleaned about as well as a young man of that age would be expected to clean, threw my dirty laundry in a suitcase and slugged it to my car. Ten minutes later, I had delivered the key at my landlord's and I was off. I was supposed to start the next term in Bergen, in Norway. I had the tickets for the trip ready and everything. I didn't even unpack but used old clothes for those last couple of days at home, basically just saying goodbye to my parents. Hmm, I thought. Not sure how good that's gonna be. You are scheduled for an exchange year. Where? Hmm. I suggest you take quantum mechanics again in Norway, Professor Murgatroyd had said. Perhaps someone there will be able to help you where I could not. Then he had discarded my paper without ever looking at it. You can leave now. And so I did. I traveled north. On the day of my arrival in Bergen, it rained. There were queues in front of the student housing offices. Of course there were. It took me a moment until I realized what felt different. People were smiling. In a queue. There was even somebody trying to talk to me. Hi, the guy said with a heavy Norwegian accent. The name's Karl Otto. How about you? Tom, I said. Nice to meet you. You from Germany? I hear it from the way you talk. Switzerland, Austria, Luxembourg. Where are you from? Germany. Which part of Norway do you come from? I hadn't gone through this ritual before, but knew it for what it was. I would spend the first couple of weeks of the autumn semester with other international students having the same conversation over and over again, getting to know people, then waiting to see who would end up being my friends at the end of the term. I didn't know it at the time, but it's a half yearly or yearly cycle everywhere where there are students, and I would go through it for almost a decade. As it was, I attempted to enjoy myself and enrolled in a few courses that interested me and in quantum mechanics. That Zeeman effect was not going to elude me, I thought. Besides, he hadn't looked at my paper, so who knows? The first lecture was quite a show. The lecturer spoke Norwegian with a dialect from up in the valley, threw sponges around the hall and chalked things onto the windows. He did so for one and a half hours. Then he turned to the class and said, A proper's nothing. We'll start properly next time. 
I joined the rest of the students who walked out of the hall, some confused, some laughing, but none understanding any of what had happened. I, however, found myself simply smiling. This could be fun! It became fun in the end too, and to my great surprise I passed the exam with a shining beautiful B. No gardeners, no oral exams at all in fact. Nothing but pen, paper and eight hours of calculations, which did not include the Zeman effect, but a whole host of pensioners taking care of us with rolls and juice and things like that. They even followed us to the loo, well, to the loo door. Afterwards, I had the weirdest couple of beers ever. You know, just students after eight hours of quantum mechanics weird. On the next day, Karl Otto and I set out on a tour to his parents' cottage, somewhere in the homeland of the giants, as he called it. Skiing up mountains and down again, motor scootering, ice fishing and trying to understand the strange Norwegian culture of Kus, while freezing away the proverbial toes, but most of all enjoying physics for the first time in my life. What? You didn't think two physics students hidden away on top of a mountain would talk only about snow and skiing? There was no way I was going to go back home. In fact, I had already started to talk to the crazy professor about a project. Do you know how to code? No. You'll learn it, huh? I want you to think, not to be good at stuff a computer could do for you. Huh. Now that was a thought. 